This is Sky World News with Philippa Thompson. The top stories, tens of thousands of people have packed the centre of the Egyptian capital Cairo in protest against President Mohamed Morsi's decree granting himself sweeping new powers. The UN's peacekeeping heads say there are signs that Congolese rebels could pull out of the key eastern city of Goma by the end of the week. And Palestinian officials say that if it's proved their former leader Yasser Arafat was poisoned, they'll take the case to the International Criminal Court. Yasser Arafat's grave has been resealed after samples from his body were removed to be tested for the radioactive poison polonium. Palestinian officials paid their respects to their late leader at a wreath-laying ceremony outside his tomb in the West Bank on Tuesday. Arafat died in November 2004 at a French military hospital, a month after falling ill at his compound in Ramallah. The immediate cause of death was a stroke, but conspiracy theories persist in the Arab world that Israel was responsible. Here's Sky's Middle East correspondent Sam Kiley. The allegation that Yasser Arafat was murdered allegedly by Israeli agents has been around as long as he's been interred since 2004. What has brought all this to the surface, though, is an investigation by Al Jazeera television in the summer this year using personal items, items that were on his body when he died or shortly before his death, provided to the channel by his widow Suha. These included a comb, undergarments and his characteristic headdress, the kafia. Now, Al Jazeera allegedly found some traces of polonium using a laboratory in Switzerland. He has now been disinterred and samples taken from his remains by Swiss, French and Russian scientists. They are going to take these samples back to their respective laboratories and investigate whether or not the Palestinian leader was indeed, it was indeed murdered. If it is found that he died of unnatural causes, the Palestinians have already promised that they will be making representations to the International Criminal Court, precisely what Israel is concerned could happen to them over a wide range of issues, including Israeli settlements, because on Thursday, the General Assembly of the United Nations will be voting on whether or not to give the Palestinians observer status at the Assembly. If they get that, then the Palestinians will indeed have the right to petition the International Criminal Court. Our Middle East correspondent Sam Kiley speaking a little earlier. Well, able to join us now from Philadelphia is Palestinian American writer and political commentator Susan Abul Hawa. Thanks very much for joining us on Sky World News. Now, conspiracy theories about the cause of Yasser Arafat's death have been circulating for some eight years. Why do you think it has taken so long to do anything about it? Well, first of all, the, the term conspiracy theory is. Um, it's generally associated with paranoid ideas that are outside the realm of, of reasonable possibility, but that's really not the case with Yasser Arafat's death. Um, the man was relatively healthy before he fell ill and uh, and, and died suddenly. Um, and he was also uh, something of a nemesis to Ariel Sharon, who was the prime minister at the time, and it was well known that Sharon really wanted him out of the way. Um, I mean, and that combined with the fact um, that Israel has a very long history and well-documented history of assassinating Palestinian leaders and clerics and um, and intellectuals. Uh, uh, so it you know um, it's it's not such a leap to to think that Yasser Arafat was murdered, especially when there's there's so much mystery surrounding his death and it was it was never really explained. Um, it's it's going but, to take uh, several months for these results to come through. Do you think? The furore is going to calm down in the meantime. Um, you know, Palestinians are uh, a very patient and uh, steadfast people. Um, the process of exhuming um, Yasser Arafat's remains is uh, very painful um, on a human level for a lot of Palestinians. But um, I think all of us would like to get to the truth of, of what really happened. Um, Isn't it but, the case, though, that some Palestinians did actually? or many of them, did disagree with his exhumation because it broke with Islamic law? Yes, um, uh, you're absolutely right. But I, I think um, there's, you know, the, the larger sentiment is that um, I think most of us really would just like to get to the truth. And um, there's, there's also a bigger, uh, a bigger context with this. I mean, for the, for the past six decades, I mean, Palestinians have been... Um, robbed, dispossessed of home and heritage and, and uh, murdered, oppressed and 
um, denied at every turn by Israel, which has acted, you know, largely with, with impunity. Um, and, you know, just what we saw a couple of weeks ago happening in Gaza with, um, you know, Israel unleashing its military might against uh, a principally unarmed civilian population with no real way to defend itself or uh, no real way to, no place to run or hide. And um, uh, so um, there is sort of this, uh, uh, this sense that, you know, um, maybe uh, Israel could be held accountable for once um, if this investigation should, you know, should show that, uh, uh, that he was murdered. Right, but let me just put this to you, Susan, very briefly. What if the investigation uh, shows that there is no trace of polonium? Will that be enough to convince Palestinians that he wasn't murdered, or will they still believe something was amiss? Well, the absence of, of, um, of polonium or even... Um, any chemical or biological fingerprints of polonium does not necessarily mean that he wasn't poisoned um, uh, uh, by polonium. I think it's it's easier to prove that he was um, he was poisoned if they find traces than he wasn't. And and it has a lot to do, I think, with um, uh, with the science. I mean, the, because of the the, the short half life of of polonium uh, of that particular isotope and. Uh, and also, I think the the, the availability of, of sufficient tissue samples and, and how comprehensive they are. So I'm, you know, I don't uh, I don't know what kind of assays they're using, um, but uh, I, I do think that it's harder to sort of to prove the null rather than than that he was poisoned. And even if they do um, uh, come back and, and say that you know that uh, he wasn't um, there, there were no polonium, there was no polonium trace or anything of the sort. Um, there's still the big lingering question of well, how did this laboratory-grade uh, isotope, radioactive isotope, get in his personal belongings? OK, Susan Abuhawa, we will have to leave it there, but thank you very much for talking to us on Sky World News. Appreciate your time. The UN's peacekeeping chief says there are signs that Congolese rebels could pull out of the key eastern city of Goma by the end of the week. But the rebels had made some difficult demands and Kinshasa is sceptical about the agreement. Well, earlier we spoke to local journalist Simone Schlinwein about the prospect of the deal succeeding.